Hello once again, it's Joe the CRM Chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those looking to validate their skills uh, building out solutions on top of or indeed extending out the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at our first code related subject. We're going to see how we can build out a JavaScript form function uh, and how we can then sort of debug and diagnose that further when we experience issues. Now it's important to emphasize again is that you know there's a reason why it's taken us so long in the series for us to get to our first code related topic. You know so really when we're focused on building out our solutions on top of the Plow platform, we really need to be leveraging what we've got available out of the box and only really resorting to code when we need to. So a great example of this from a JavaScript point of view is that we should be using business rules as much as possible. You know, they give us the capability to be able to do things such as, you know, show or hide fields, set values based on sort of simple logic. You know, and they're really great and supported tool that we can use to achieve that. However, there will be limits to business rules. So a great example and one, one which we're going to look at today is that business rules won't let you or allow you to rename the various fields that are on your form. You know, you can't do things just calling the, the web API. You can't hide entire uh, sections. You can't have specific logic trigger. You know, you know, if you've got a very complex logic that you need to evaluate, a business rule isn't going to support that. So that's where we must then turn to using a JavaScript form function instead. So let's see how we can sort of use that and build one out uh, from scratch really and deploy it out to the platform. So we start off first of all making sure we're in the context of our solution uh, because that's where we want to always be when we're, when we're sort of adding stuff into our, um, you know, so we're developing things out as developers for the Power Platform. And to sort of re-emphasize again, what we want to do today is build out a form function that basically renames some of the different address labels that are on our account form. So we can see down here, these are the fields down here that we want to target. These are all resulting from the composite address control that has been added onto the form. And we can see on here, there's a bit of repetition going on. Address one is repeated for each particular one. Uh, it's quite sort of American focused in terms of its language and terminology. So as an example, you know, state and province, zip and postal code here in the UK, we typically wouldn't refer to these as those. So we want to just change this and make this more relevant to us as, you know, based on our geography in the application. So to do that, we're gonna to have to resort to using a JavaScript form function. Now to build one out, um, we would typically use a tool such as Visual Studio Code to help us in that regard. Uh, so I'm just gonna open that up onto the main window here. And I'm already set up to work in a specific workspace environment, a folder called PL400. And all I want to do first of all is just get our JavaScript file created. So we just wanna call this PL400 um, sample.js. So these are JavaScript files that we can just sort of create and write and we can use any IDE tool of our choice to help sort of um, build these out in a sort of successful way. And for the sake of time, and because this video is not going to be, um, this isn't this video isn't a tutorial on how to write JavaScript form functions, you know, that is a whole topic in of itself. We're gonna assume that you've got some knowledge already um, on how to do that. So we're just gonna work off a pre-existing ex pre example. Um, that has been built out and we're just going to explain what it's doing you know um, with a focus towards um, the platform power platform specific nature nature of things as part of that so I'm just going to copy and paste uh, this across from my other screen and we'll just sort of go through and start to explain what's going on here so it's generally good practice to have uh, namespaces declared for our libraries as we're building them out so we can see we've got these two namespaces up here and we've enclosed all of our functions within a, um, within a namespace called account form. Function, we declare our functions in much the same way we would as any JavaScript form function. The key thing we need to remember though is that when we're building out our form functions, we always need to specify or provide the execution context. Now within this um, parameter, uh, contains all of the various things that we're going to need to be able to do things to our form. So if we want to access properties of fields, if we want to call the web API, if we want to um, you know, uh, access various different components on the form, all of that is going to be contained within the execution context. And we can just sort of from there get our form context and then that will then allow us to start working with our individual controls on our form. So in this case here we can see we're working with uh, a specific um, type of component on the form um, basically the address one line one field from the composite address control that I referenced a few minutes ago. So you can see we've got this all of these functions on here and what we're doing here is just basically if, we, if we've got this control on the form we just want to rename it so therefore um, we only want to potentially apply um, our new label uh, 
um, you know, when we know there's something on there for us to work with. And if it doesn't, then the script will just ignore it completely and we won't get any nasty errors whatsoever. Now, in this case, we've actually added in a deliberate error onto our script. So we can see down here on lines 31 and 34, uh, we are going to be simulating an error message. Uh, and as part of that, we can then sort of take a look and see, okay, how does that sort of appear in the application? Then how can we go in and start to diagnose things um, just a little bit further from there? So that, this form function is pretty much ready to go. So I'm just going to hit save on that one to save it down. And now I'm going to return into the Power Platform, uh, the Power Apps Maker Portal, I should say. And we first need to add our JavaScript library onto into our solution. And we do this by doing new at the top, go down to other, and then we select web resource down here. This is going to take us out into the classic interface. Uh, and then we're just going to call this uh, pl400sample.js. Uh, uh, we'll give it a name and a description. We always want to make sure we try and provide these where possible to give some context and relevancy to our components. Just type that in like so. We want to make sure that under type we select um, uh, JScript. Um, so in this case, it's referring to Microsoft's terminology here. Um, there's a whole history behind JScript and JavaScript. Uh, you can sort of look it up at your own time if you're interested. And under text editor, editor here, we just want to copy and paste in our library as we built it out. So I'm just going to grab that and plunk it into there. Press OK. At this point is going to save our script for us. We can optionally add in a language. We can also even upload our JavaScript library entirely if we wanted to. Uh, it's really up to us in that regard. Uh, and at this point, what I want to do is just hit quick publish on here. And then this will then make sure that we can then do what we need to do as part of the next, step step, next steps uh, along the way. So at this point, I'm going to close this down on here. It's going to return us to the Maker Portal. We should see when this refreshes that we've got our um, web resource added in like so. So with this added on, now we need to actually go on to our particular form, our account form. We need to add on the library, and then we need to add on our event handler. And the event handler basically just tells the application to run our function at the point where um, you know, we want to in our, particular, um, in our particular scenario. So we're going to click on account up here going to go into forms click on the account form and then first thing I'm going to do is going to add in our um, the library up here using the uh, the button down here click on add library it's going to load up all of the different JavaScript libraries that are in this particular environment so I'm just going to type in PL 400 and hit search on there then we can see here's the sample library we just created add that on like so then on the right hand side I'm going to click on events now you've got various different event handlers available to, available to us um, based on where we're working in the application. So in the in the, in the context of forms, uh, the two main ones that we'll work with is our on save event handlers. So we can execute logic as people are saving records. Maybe we can go in and interrupt the save operation if certain conditions are violated. Or in the or the second one and the one we're going to be using today is our onload event. So after the form is loaded, we want to run a series of scripts, and in this case, we want to run a script that basically renames the labels on our particular form. So we click on the plus icon to add our event handler on. Um, it populates a few details for us already. Um, so because we've got the just the one library added onto our form, that's the one that's selected. Uh, and now we need to specify the name of our function. So this needs to be the full function name, including namespaces. So I'm just going to copy that across from the um, from the, um, uh, the the file that we've already created. Uh, we want to make sure that this has been enabled, and we always want to make sure that we've got this second option ticked on here. We always want to pass the execution context as our first parameter, because if we don't, then things will start um, going wrong uh, when our function tries to call it. Additionally, if we did have a static um, parameter values that we wanted to pass to the function, you know, maybe we've got one generic function covering different table types in the application, then here would be where we pass this in as a comma separated list. Uh, it's not relevant for us today, so I'm just going to click on done. It's going to add our event handler on there. I'm just going to hit save and publish. Then that'll be ready to go and we can start testing this in the application. So just give that a second to publish. Okay, so now if we return to our account form, um, I'm going to give this um, browser page a full refresh. I'm going to do this by hitting the Control F5 keys. This will make sure that it completely reloads the form, including any libraries. And we can see that straight away I get a script error. So we know that in this case our simulated error message is sort of doing what we want it to do. 
Um, so this is what you would typically see if a script doesn't work, you'll get an error similar to this unless it's something that you've handled yourself or indeed you're throwing your own custom error. Uh, and in this case, we can click on the download log file and we can get a bit more detail about what's actually going on with our particular error message on here. So we can see in this case that we get a type error, cannot read property set label of null. Um, so in this case, it's because it can't find a particular control with the name that we specified. And we also get some additional details down here that can help us to narrow down the issue. So we know straight away this is a problem with our function based on the function name and the web resource name that has been, um, that has been included in the error details down there. Apart from that, though, we can actually see that our script has done what we wanted to do for the fields that are um, on the form. So let's assume now that maybe based on the error message that we downloaded, you know, we, we still can't figure out, okay, why is this error in? What, you know, what's the problem here? Basically, we need to, we, we decided we need to do some more advanced debugging. Um, so in order to do this, we need to actually use the developer tools within our particular browser of choice. So today, because I'm using Edge Chromium, I just want to click on the three dots up here. I go to more tools, select developer tools. It's going to load me up into this, um, onto the page like this. I'm just going to uh, remove it, undock it completely so it can go full screen. Uh, and from here, what I can do is I make sure I'm on the sources tab up here. I click on control P. I can then search for our particular JavaScript file and we can see here it is in its sort of entirety. And from this window, what I can do is actually I can breakpoint this any particular area in this um, in this library. So if I wanted to maybe maybe I wasn't too sure, maybe I think this could be the problem up here. Maybe I want to breakpoint these two points down here just to, just to understand a bit more detail. Anything within your library can be breakpointed um, for sort of closer inspection. And all I now need to do is go back onto the form, refresh it again and we should see that our breakpoints start getting hit. So the first one has been hit up here. I can then click next to go down here. I can use the various capabilities in the browser to be able to do some more monitoring of this. So as an example, let's say I wanted to inspect my form context in a bit more detail, just to confirm that I'm getting what I'm getting. So I can see this all looks good for me down, to down here like so. I can actually just copy and paste this entire line down here just to sort of see, okay, is there actually something here for me to work with? Um, if I expand this out a little bit further, um, I can actually see in this case that there's actually not something in there that we can actually use. We're actually returning not available for that particular one. Um, for If I was to check, let's say, uh, this one up here for the postal code instead, place it like so. Um, oh, actually, no, I've just realized there's an issue with there. I've forgotten the bracket at the end. Yeah, so there we go. Um, so let's, let's just grab this one again just so that we can look at it in particular. So we can see that you know it's on the form when we use this particular label down there. If we were to change the label to this will error, um, just by updating it like so down here. Uh, oh, no, it's been a bit, can be a little bit finicky sometimes. Let me just, there we go. So I'm just gonna remove all of that text there, paste that in. We can see we get a null in that case. So we know we know that based on debugging and diagnosing this, um, that because um, this particular line will always return null, whenever we try and do set label like so, it's gonna return an error because it can't set the label on something that doesn't exist on the form. So using the browser debugging tools, we can narrow down the problem quite specifically and we can use this to be able to figure out what's going wrong. So I'm just gonna let this sort of break through into errors again back in the application. And now what we can do is actually go back into our um, into our library. We can fix the particular error by just sort of grabbing the correct field name like so, adding that in. I can then go back into the maker portal. Uh, I'm, and all I need to do now is just update the, um, the JavaScript web resource library with the latest um, version of our file, and then we're good to go. So in this case, um, I'm going to co just copy and paste back in the entire uh, form function, or the form, or the library, I should say. I want to make sure I do a save and publish, like so. Uh, give the form a full refresh again, again using Control F5, because we want to make sure that nothing's been cached and we're getting the latest version of our uh, JavaScript library. And we can see in this case that we're still getting a error message. Let me just check the library just to make sure that it's coming through the latest, uh, latest version. Uh, oh, there's a typo there, I've just realized. 
So it should be address one country like so. So again, just save that down there. Same thing as before, let's just go in and just copy and paste that. Save and publish. Back on the form, control F5, and we should all be hunky dory. Yep. So we can see no error this time, uh, and it's basically renamed the final field of us field for us without any issues. So our JavaScript form function is good and ready to go, and we're happy that it's all working as intended. So that pretty much wraps it up for today. Um, it's a very basic example, um, you know, from a form function standpoint, you know, JavaScript, you can potentially do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with it. So really today, the focus has been on just showing you how you can create the form function, how you can get it added into the application, and most crucially, debug it as well. You know, I really would encourage you to go away, do some more investigation about the various different um, um, you know, methods and functions that we've got at our disposal when we're working with JavaScript, familiarize yourself with that. Um, and indeed, if you haven't ever worked with JavaScript before yourself, then do indeed spend some time um, learning the sort of the, the basic mechanics of it. Um, you know, the exam really does assume that you've got that knowledge already uh, and, the, and that you're adequately equipped from that standpoint if you're coming into this for the first time. So all it leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like this video or subscribe, to, or subscribe to the channel if you like the content. We'd lo love to see more. We're continuing this series across um, multiple weeks now uh, covering this exam. Uh, we've also got others as well um, on other topics as well. So I hope that they are useful and I hope that you have... Um, I wish you were on your exam if you are indeed sitting it in the future. So take care and catch you later. Cheers.